Hello, and in this part, we're going to create a digital asset from the crates. This digital asset or HDA can also be used in Unity or other game engines, like you could see here that I made some crates with the HDA. Something important to know before we're going to create the HDA is if you want to separate the two pieces from each other, like I have here in Unity. If you're going to create an HDA from these nodes in the sub level, there will be one big mesh in Unity. If you want multiple meshes in Unity, then we need to go back to the object level and we create another geometry node and we name it create part 2. If you would create an HDA from these nodes, they will now be separated in Unity. So select these nodes, you can create a subnetwork from them and then right click create digital asset and call it create generator. What you could also do is directly save this in the Unity project, like I did here, in my asset folder under the create project. Because I saved it directly in the Unity project, it's easy to go from Houdini to Unity. So in this HDA menu, by default we will have all these values. So these are the values for transformation and so on. So I'm going to select them all, and we're going to click invisible, because I don't need to see them. I'm going to click apply. And I'm going to quickly jump in Unity, and my create generator is here, and I will be drag and dropping it in the Unity scene. And we can see that we have this result. You can see that everything is pink because the shader doesn't really support the HDR pipeline. And I'm going to quickly grab one of my materials so we can see this a little bit better. So we can definitely see here that we have separated objects, so I can drag them around. So this is already kind of working. First thing that I'm going to set up is that the Houdini asset is going to automatically assign a material so I don't have to always have to look at this pink material. So go in Houdini. What we will have to do is here at the bottom you type in Unity material and then you can use this to assign a material. There is also one for Unreal. Depending on what game engine you will use, you can use one of them. So in here, you can already see that they typed in a path, so you have to type a relevant path to the material you want to use. Same for the Unreal one. So in my case, it would look something like this. Asset folder, then my cre the create project folder, my material folder, and then I want to use base color 01. So basically, if you would jump to Unity, you just basically follow what's here in the project. So assets folder, create project and then material folder and then the name of the material. So if I would save this asset now and jump into Unity, then I will click rebuild. I will now have my crate. So I didn't assign it to the cube, but I'm gonna replace the cube anyway with a model. So for, for now I'm also going to go to the cube and I'm gonna delete it. Then I'm going to open the window to create the properties and we're going to make the HDA. So now we're going to create some parameters to control in Unity. You can simply drag and drop values in the asset. Like I want to change the, the box size so we can drag and drop this here. And I will call it the size of the box. Then we also want to control the amount of this. So I'm going to first Cut this out and then reference this. And I will give it a name top top bottom ratio. And then apply. And this value, I'm gonna put back this bounding box. I like to keep it separate so it's easy to adjust if you want to. So then I have split up my network into the create and then the top panel. So I want to create some folders for that. So bottom part and then another folder with the top part. As I mentioned before in the last video that this part will be a multi-parameter. So it has the advantage of we can say how much I want to do this boolean. Like if I need this boolean five times, I can just click the button five times to create this boolean. So we're going to create a folder and we're going to call it amount boolean and change the type to a multi 
parameter block. So you have the list, the scrolling or tabs. Depending on what you prefer to see, you can use the list, scrolling or tabs. But I'm going to go with the list so it will list all the parameters under each other and then click on apply. If I would go quickly back to my network, I have now my parameters. So we have the size that we can adjust. We, and then here we have the multi-parameter, so I can click this plus icon to say how many booleans I want. And then I'm going to build further here on to use these values. Give this a value, so we can work with these values, because zero means that there will no booleans. Then we go back into the network. Then what we want to do is create a for each number. So basically for each number that I've put in the amount of booleans, I want to loop in this network. Then I'm going to integrate this loop. So this node has to come here and the other one will be here at the end. And we can see that the loop is going to all of these nodes, but we have to delete this line of the copy to points. So it's only looping over these shapes. Then we go to the last node in the loop. Then in the iteration number, we're going to have to type the amount of booleans. One more small thing I forgot is I didn't give this a proper name. So I'm going to go back here and I'll just call it boolean amount. So we're going to reference the channel. So we have to do this part twice. And that is because we are having multiple objects. So this means go one node back. Then we are on this network. But we actually have to go one more back to have access to this layer. So if everything is correct, we should see the value 2, which is then of course the same as we did here. So right now it's only going to loop two times this network. So now I want to control what is happening in each loop. Let's say I want to change the thickness scale here over each loop. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to create a few floats. So I'm going to use some floats, call it the first one, I'm going to call it depth. This would then just be the depth on how far it goes in the shape. And I will also give it here a proper name. And I will be calling it boolean1 depth. Then I'm going to create a few more. Uh, the scale area, which is the thickness scale. And also proper naming. Then I want to make a move up slash down. So we can control where the shape is along the surface and give it also a better name. Then I'm also gonna use a scale Y so we can scale the, sh the boolean shaped along the Y axis. Then also uh, I want to control the beveling. And Copy this bevel one more time, and we need the divisions. So once you have a few parameters, you can press apply. And notice that there is now a hashtag added to the names. So this hashtag has then to be replaced with a number. So if I would, if I would for example, go here in the thickness scale, and let's say I want to use the the scale area value that I made. So we can see that there is scale number one and number two. So we have to find a way to automatically put the one or the two because we cannot type this. So what we need to do is we need to build our own string. This is the expression you need to build your own string. So what you need is this expression and we can use this then with our parameter we have. So for example, for the depth, this will be filled in here without the hashtag. And then the number will be coming from the, and then the number will be coming from the for each count. So if we go here to this node, we can see that in the detail attributes, it includes an iteration number. And this is the, value that I need. So this part then returns the current number of the loop. And we also have to do plus one because it starts from zero. So the first loop will be called zero. 
so I have to add plus one because depth zero doesn't exist so now I'm just gonna copy paste this let's go here to the poly extrude and in thickness I'm gonna copy paste this code and I'm gonna adjust it a little bit so I know that I've called this scale area and I'm also gonna fill in the depth and I can see that we are working here with quite low values so instead of replacing it fully I'm gonna multiply these values with it yeah. and here we're gonna use the depth press apply and for the moment I'm only gonna use this one and we can actually see that it's not really working that is because some of the values are returning zero so open back up the menu and if we go to the channel tab we can set some defaults so for example I can fill in one my skill area I know it was around 0.7 and then here I'm gonna fill in one also bevel amount and divisions one I'm gonna click apply and going back here we can see the shapes if I would now quickly jump into the object so if you press ctrl 2 you can actually set a quick mark and every time you press 2 you will be jumping to this view so now we should be able to control the depth with these values but one little mistake I made is I'm gonna temporarily also remove this part and now we have the result that we wanted so going back here so if I play around with these sliders I can create the depth of how much I want to pull in my shapes in there I also notice that the parameter has a big range in here of values so I'm also gonna adjust that to open back up the parameter menu and we are going back here and the depth should for example go from 1 to maybe 3 and skill area from 1 from 0 to 2.5 and this is already way nicer to to control so we can create something like this we can also go back to the game engine and rebuild the asset so it should look like this I might need to add some normals in there so it looks like this now and here I can set also my boolean amount and we can already see this going on and you can see that this is working actually pretty fast in the game engine and I can also quickly adjust the size here if I want a bigger crate so back to Houdini then and in here I'm going to continue with referencing the other values so we can control all these values in the game engine and I will be using a transform and in this transform I want to use the up or down so I'm gonna use my move parameter then I'm also going to into the scale and I have a scale Y attribute that I want to use and then lastly we have the beveling which I will here be multiplying and here we have the division amount so going going quickly back into the network here so I can scale this up I can also move it a bit better and I noticed that this is not that nicely to work with so I'm gonna go in the menu and say I want to go from minus 4 to 4 and click apply and then now I should be able to control this nicely and with this we can already create some little bit more complexer shapes in there so now I have mainly focused on on these nodes but I also of course want to use the other ones that I made and I will be you having a switch node that will switch between these versions based on what the user prefers so I'm gonna keep my bevel underneath it so I don't have to set up the bevel for everyone then I would delete this part and I would copy paste these notes here 
and then also I want to copy paste the transform nodes and I want to use it here on the shape you can also like color code some of the nodes where you fill in all the parameters so if you press C you have a little color menu and let's say all these all these nodes here have been using a, a multi-parameter channel then I also want to create a multi-parameter from this one so let's say we want to drag and drop this here we're gonna create a menu out of this so zero means boolean from the sides input one is the bottom and number two is on the corner booleans then press apply this will throw a warning because we need to include this piece again so I'm just gonna copy paste it here and then change this code to input and press apply then if I would jump back to my object I see I have now a little menu here where I can say to do a boolean on the bottom or to do a corner boolean then I want to restore this corner piece that I made and what I will be doing for this is I'm gonna create an attribute and I'm gonna call it corner piece this will be a primitive and an integer and the default value is 1 then at the end of the loop I'm gonna blast away based on the corner piece value so at the corner piece equals 1 and this is a primitive and delete non selected so then we have these corner pieces and I can just use this here and this is also now working back again so I can plug this back in here so one thing I have to mention is that the main boolean I use here is subtract if you want combinations of different booleans that will also be possible and you could also include the boolean in a for each loop and have a multi-parameter selecting which type of boolean it is this was then the first multi-parameter and further we can also expose some values here of the of the main crate so we have here the bevels and this is not exclusive for the bottom part so I'm gonna drag it here and I'm gonna give it a value 1 here and I'm gonna multiply by the small value and also the divisions call it the bevel divisions and press apply then what I just did actually here I actually also want that here and I'm gonna copy paste the notes and I'm gonna switch it out so it also immediately works on this system as well so going further here down what I want to control is the inset and the amount on how far my crate is going so I'm both gonna expose these values and I'm gonna call this the depth of the crate and this one the border size and pressing apply then I go to this network here and we're also gonna create here a multi-parameter and it will basically a very similar way of how I did the first one so I'm gonna go a little bit faster on this one so create a for each count put it in the system then creating all the necessary values like the multi-parameter amount boolean I'm gonna copy paste these values and place them here and I'm gonna change this so once that's set up we can link all the values so first of all we need to give in the amount of booleans that's happening so going back to the iterations and filling this in then also adding a value here so then here we can use the same expression as we did before with a few changes of course so first is the new parameter name and then we also need to use for each count number two which is this node then copy paste this expression and use it for the other nodes as well
then deleting this part again and copy paste it back here with all the values linked except for the bevel and we're also going to use the same search system as we did in the other network and also using the transform node again here to move the shapes up and down and so on and I'm going to place the transform here then I need to reference the input menu and we also need to go back here and change this menu to only go to 1, to 0 or 1 so we have a side boolean and we have a top boolean and click on apply uh, one more thing I also could do is going back here to the transform and fill in this expression so without this expression you can see that the pivot point is in the middle of the world but with this expression pivot point is in the center of the object so this will result in controlling for example the scale a little bit easier and then I also add some color codes again and last thing you could do here is again is the same as the other one is exposing the distance and the inset of the panel go back in the game engine rebuild it and we can see all the values that we can control here we can already start building some nice crates if you want that but the next thing that I want to do is to separate these parts like I said in the beginning so right now this is just one big mesh you can see that also here in hierarchy we want two individual separate meshes so we can do something like this so going back in Houdini and what I want to do here is creating some attributes and I will call this ID piece and this is then one and the other one is two and I will be later using this attribute more but for a moment I'm going to use it to split up the geometry in here create the null node and this one is I'm going to call it out create so go back up to the network and then here we go into the second part and use an object merge node and with this object merge node I want to reference the out create and then here using a blast node and blast based on that attribute so at id if it's one that part can be deleted and I'm also going to create a null node here call this part 2 then actually I'm going to copy this here and paste it underneath here and then reverse this node part 1 I can also see that my logs are not properly set up so I'm going to copy this piece here then here for the log we're going to make some changes this whole crate is then value 1 and then with the logs I made a separation between the, the bottom part which is part piece 1 then and then the part for the top crate which is then part 2 so going back here to this result we can see that this now is being separated and this is then the result also important to know that the pivot we are having here will be the same as we will have in unity so this is not a nice pivot point to work with so what we will do is use the axis align and I'm gonna place it on the grid if you want to have a very specific pivot on the side like here on the side I'm gonna show it in unity quickly so we can for example open the grid like this that is also possible and then you have to move the y-axis to minus and then the pivot will be here but in my case I actually want to just center it and then when we go back here we see that the position is not correct anymore it should be around here what we could do is ask how big create, create 1 is so create part 1 and I want to know the y max size and we can see that's going on top 
and because of this lock system I have I'm just gonna subtract some value here that will work and then again if your if your pivot would be something like this then you would also uh, have to use the bounding boxes to move it in this position so you then basically do the same here as the bounding boxes but don't ask the y size but ask the z size and divide this by 2 so you can place it correctly so then jumping back in unity to double check this result we can see that we have now two parts and I can open the crate. Uh, one more thing we need to do here is restore back this top panel and I will be doing this by creating an attribute and giving this panel a name and call this top piece. I'm gonna save it in primitives and give it the value 1. And this result I will be merging it with the shape that we need for the boolean. And then here I use a split. I'm going to split based on that attribute. So at top piece equals one. Then we have this result and invert the selection. Then I'm going to replace the wires. And then simply, if we have results, then we should see that in the merge. And it should look something like this. Then the last feature I want to add is, let's say I have a unity cube and I want my grid to be the same size as this unity cube. So going back here and we go back to the top. So this is sort of like built-in cube. But I want a unity cube so I'm gonna use an object merge node and in the parameter menu I'm going to expose this object. I'm gonna call it object from unity press accept. Then in here I'm gonna switch between these two. So I'm exposing this here and select input and menu. So zero will be the building uh, cube or shape. And then my second input is a custom shape. And then going back into Unity. So, and then this menu here pops up. And we can use this menu then to select a, a random object and get the information from. So in here I have a basic cube and I put the pivot on the lowest point. So it's easy for me to change some values. Then what we could do is we can add a slot, add a selection. So add a slot will this menu, add a selection will give you a menu and show all the objects found in the scene. You can click on the things you need and then press accept. And But if you use the slot, you can drag and drop the cube in here. Then I switch from building cube to my custom shape. So what we can actually notice is that we will have some weird shapes going on. They kind of look nice, but that's not exactly what I wanted from my crate. Going back here in Houdini, I want to build a safe system for what just happened. And the reason why this was happening is because the Unity Cube was looking like this. So it was triangulated, which conflicted with the system that I just built. An easy way to go around this is by using the bounce node here. And then we can see that there is no triangulation going on there. Rebuilding the asset now, this will give us the result that we just built. So if we would change the size of this cube, my digital asset should also update, but you can see it's not doing it real time. We can change this temporarily by going to the asset options and enable transform changes trigger cooks. So once enabled, so every time you make a little change, it's gonna update the crate. But be careful when using this. Right now the grid is not a super complex object, so you can see it's actually in real time adjusting the size. And the cool thing about this is that we can quickly adjust grid sizes and you can find the correct size for your level that you need. So that was it for this part of the tutorial. Next part we're going to go over some high poly baking and making the materials.